channeling and just like it just like comes out I, I found this lady a few days ago who was talking about it while she was channeling she's like and you're feeling awesome now and the energy is just kind of pouring through I can't really help it it just kind of comes through and I was just like she was saying it like milliseconds after I would feel it and I was like just blown away that's awesome to hear about that. Yeah. It's really cool. I like hearing about the place that other people are at in their ascension process. Yeah, me too. Exactly. Because everyone's having a unique experience with this. It's really cool to hear everyone's. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, I've been really realizing I need to share my story. A little yeah, more. definitely. Yeah, I was curious about, like, inspiration for your music and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Really, it's all over the place. But. I don't know. I, I realized something I want to talk about on the show is, like, the whole starseed thing. And, like, I don't know. I discovered it, like, a few years ago. And then I told Katie about it. And, like, we decided to start, or she just started to start decided to start the group um but then I had this past life regression where I essentially like it's this guided meditation where you go into like your heart center and there's this whole imaginary place mine was like this cave and like infinite doorways in this doorways in this really deep cavern and I was really interested in like my past life with my like my current girlfriend then and all that stuff so I was like going in with attention to that but the last second I saw this door that said Pleiades so I was like oh wait that's that's way more interesting I'm gonna go in there and I saw myself like blue skin um I was like in this crazy futuristic land where there's like this ergonomic um like shaped building everything's like super high tech but there's like everyone's like really connected to nature really it was like not quite exactly like the people in Avatar, but it was like a lot like that, and it could have been through my imagination playing with that, but I had this pamphlet in my hand called Battleship Earth, and it was all about how the institutions of Earth and the people that control those institutions are like ruling the planet. It's like, essentially it was like the mission statement for the Starseed mission beforehand and I like went around the galaxy and ended up finding a bunch of people I saw us put our bodies in like box type things and like transport our consciousness to earth into like the baby form Hmm. our soul just like jumped literally on this alien space invasion like that's like the word that keeps like we're like invading this territory to take back earth was like what I was shown and that's why we came and that's why we wanted to start Star Seeds to find the other crew members or whatever it is yeah. called. That was pretty much how Eternal Tribe started. Like not everybody had that same vision, but we had the same goal in mind to help everyone out. Yeah. Like, definitely understand. I'd love to learn more about Eternal Tribe. Well, I can tell you, uh, we all met up in Three Days of Light. Three Days of Light. Nah, nobody knew each other that went there, except for, like, Nick and Tristan. Really? Okay. And Zenora. I think they knew each other. But, like, everybody else came out of the blue. And it was just a s- super strong group that we had because we were there three days before everyone else was there. So mm-hmm. we already had, like, three days of living with each other. and like Because everybody was... You know, in that high vibe, everybody was experiencing just eternal happiness together. And so we went from three days of light. We didn't want to break up yet. I mean, you don't want to break up that strong of an energy. So, I wow. mean, yeah, we hung on to that. And one of our friends is, he had a van. And we all went to the Java bar after the day after 3DL ended and we're like okay if you're in this we're going cross country and then Iz was talking maybe everyone can't come because there's nine people 
and it's not that big of a van. But I mean, maybe they can, because that's how he is. He'll just be like, well, maybe. Right. <laughs> He'll like, go a different way at the end of his sentence. He's an awesome dude. Really awesome. You should meet him. You love. Him. I would love to. Always, he's always got a book in his hand. Always writing quotes, and he calls them keys. And you see this key that he writes, and it happened while we were on the trip. He wrote keys as we were experiencing them in that moment. And they're keys that are going to like open up different portals that people could go through with their consciousness. Right. Uh, so, I mean, he's coming out with a book pretty soon, I'm sure. He's got tons of them. Really? He said he wanted to write it into them. But he had a van, and so nobody wanted to leave. So everybody said... I definitely want to go. Yeah. We hopped in the van. All nine of us. It was so crammed. There's no leg space. You were like scrunched up constantly. Right. <clears throat> and we made it pretty far. Austin, all of us went to Austin, but that's where a few people left because. Austin's pretty cool. Yeah. And then, I don't know, on the trip we were talking about our goals and all of our goals, like, we're in each other's other frequency, frequencies, so, I mean, we could understand each other, and we we're all pretty much about the same goal, just planting seeds. Yeah. Like Johnny Appleseed. Everywhere we went, sprinkled a little bit of spirituality. That's I think, what it's all about. Yeah. Definitely helped awaken some people, help them get through some trials on the trip. Really? So we're like, we should, you know, we should <coughs> have a name. For some reason, we just kept trying to come up with a name for so long. And then Eternal Tribe just it was the one chosen. It's beautiful. Because we're all, we're all eternal beings, and we should all be living like we're in a tribe, just one big tribe, you know, with the whole universe. Yeah. So the whole universe is just like one tribe. And the universe is eternal, so eternal tribe. I think it fits pretty well. It's the favorite thing. My favorite thing I've seen in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it feels really good to talk about too. Yeah, for sure. It's really good for me to hear because I haven't had that tribe experience. Honestly, I haven't really... I mean, I've like met people who are awake, but my like I was like 17 and I just like <clears throat> for me it was like I was literally like I think I my soul like have you heard of walk-in experiences where a soul that like, comes into your your vehicle mm -hmm. yeah Nick actually had it pretty bad a few times on the trip really yeah <laughs> I like bad a few times wow <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I guess I like to think of it as, like, my my personal soul, like, wasn't fully in my physical vessel until that first time where I woke up. Um, maybe because, like, the, honestly, like, the my body probably would explode, is how mm -hmm. I like to... I actually wrote that same exact thing down, too. <laughs> it was a one-sentence channel. Wow. If you got all this information at once, your head would explode. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like... You gotta be patient with this whole process. Yeah, exactly. But, I, I don't know, I just... I woke up to such a d deep degree, I realized, like, you know, I've learned so much practical things since that moment, but it's still, like, that one realization that I, comes with me. And... I haven't met other people who have, like, the eternity realization, like, the full oneness and so much more of that I'm such a listener um, transmuter of energy like, like an introvert. they unload on me mm -hmm. like and I just like on the surface it's, it's beautiful but like underneath there's like a constant crisis going on and it's just nice to have people hold space yeah <laughs> yeah no I, I get it I was I didn't read the whole article. I usually go to like n5d.com. Yeah, me too. Um, I just have that like. They were talking about. <laughs> it's literally my first thing here. 
that 25% of the population right now is uh, introverted. Exactly. And then they said that it's going to be pretty much reversed in the next higher reality. Yeah, I definitely feel that. Did you see the one they had about the top 10 myths of introverts? They just posted here? Mm -mm. The what? Um, top 10 introverted myths. <laughs> no, I didn't. It's pretty cute. Should read it. I liked it a lot. Introverts don't like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Introverts don't like to talk. It says that they just don't like to talk unless they have something to say. They hate the small talk. <laughs> like this is how I feel right now like this is a good example because most of my friends I'm like the listener to them well that's it's not as if you're actually having time having conversation it's like they're talking at you or mm. like um I wanted to bring up like the ego mind thing because like there's like this incessant need to like <clears throat> feel like I, I mean, it, on a deeper level, like, you want this oneness w with another person, but it gets covered up by the ego mind's, like, need to have attention, like, in a superior way. Mm -hmm. Like, people are always, like, trying to override you with, like, one-upping you and stories and stuff. Like, just me and my story. And if that story isn't being shared, they feel like they're not alive they're they feel like they're almost dead like if they're not communicating their past experiences all the time like you know people are like earlier today i was at work and it was horrible mm -hmm. like every day <laughs> they don't realize every day and yeah. yeah definitely had to get into living in the moment Especially in Hawaii, that definitely got me into the next frequency because I definitely live in every moment and it's an eternal moment. But the only thing that shifts is the reality. And so, like in Hawaii, I didn't have any clock on me for That's over a week. The only thing I experienced was the sun and the moon inside. It's like how, uh, how I feel it should be. Yeah. Unless you're at a, I realize time is good for figuring what time a band starts. <laughs> 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 that was my big realization about time. Like after just being outside of it for so long. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Coordination of events. I'm wondering if in the next shift, mm -hmm. the major shift. Right where we're going to be able to be in any moment, in any instant, you know. By location? With, yeah, you could just shift your awareness and instantly, you know, happens instantaneously. You're there. Like, that's going to be amazing. And really, wherever you are, it's like probably the, in the greatest good for you. Mm -hmm. So if you're missing out on something you think you want to be at but you're like stuck in another place you're, you know you're stuck like I've been like stuck here to learn so much like it's it's like like one of that that channeling I was listening to earlier she's saying like <clears throat> we don't realize but like this lifetime we're like releasing karma from like every lifetime ever we're just like getting to the depth of everything we've ever been wanting to release where we're stopping the roles of, like, duality of, like, you know, even just, like, I'm a man, you're a girl, you know, just, like, you know, we are eternal spirits, and embracing that fully, like, fully remember, like, I like to think of this, like, 3D physical reality as, like, dual, this very specific third density reality is a game, in a sense, to help our soul experience limitation we're like the we're like mastering limitation that's mm -hmm. Bashar would say we're like we're so good at limitation it's ridiculous 
That's what yeah. I mean. It's like, what? That's, and he's like, that's how loved we are. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> exactly. The master's physical reality is like hilarious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's good though, I mean, I think some of the angels are gonna be impressed. Right. Yeah, we can get this lift. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Man. That's pretty crazy. I'm excited for the new age, though. Yeah, man. It's gonna be. It is, like already. I've felt shifts every day. Some of them are so powerful. And while I was at work, as a Jedi would say, I felt a disturbance in the Force, but it wasn't a disturbance. It was more like a, something really good. Really. Shifting, and it felt really good. That's yeah. awesome. But it was more in my like consciousness than it was in like my physical body. Yeah. So it's like a mind. I don't know. <laughs> Something with your mind. Yeah. Can't even describe it right now. But right. I will soon. Right. Hey. Hey kitty. Oh. Oh, cool. <laughs> I think it's good like to have an experience that you can't describe. It's almost I wouldn't say necessarily better to not use words, but just the ineffable, like, undescribable reality, the void, like, that, I feel like, is the new consciousness. It's, like, prior to thoughts, prior to emotion, that new consciousness, a new awareness is, like, the new dimension, that, and it's just starting to come in fully, mm -hmm. like, never before for a lot of people. And I totally expected it um, around this time, you know, around the 21st. But just to experience it and go through it after, like, because, like, after the 21st, it was, like, a few months of, like, blah. Like, mm -hmm. everyone's like, we're not in the fifth dimension. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's better. Even though the 21st was such a good day. But just, yeah. like, afterwards, it was kind of, like, although I didn't notice for a few weeks, like, everything was, like, really clear and awesome. I feel like there's just like this worldwide like kind of like yeah I heard, heard Zenora talking on the show and she was saying that you don't really I mean a lot of people paid attention to the end date but nobody had paid attention to the to the next start date yeah of the new one which started later in February yeah so it was like a few months yeah Blah. this is funny I just realized this thing I'm playing with has my birthday on it Really? Yeah. <laughs> what is it? That's a bread. Yeah, it's like a bread thing. A bread pick. April 10th. That's your birthday? Yeah. <laughs> Does that say 2013? Mm -mm. Just April 10th? Just April 10th. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. That's another thing why I wanted to talk about angels, because my life has just turned into crazy, synchronistic things like this. Mm -hmm. Like, I am pretty much experiencing like a dream reality constantly now where things that normal scientists and physicists would say is not possible is happening to me like si like literal signs are just being written in like on it just feels like my soul or like the creator just and the angels just change reality and cater it towards me like even when I'm with other people like, it'll be a little more catered towards me, which mm -hmm. I feel like is more of a vibrational thing than, like, um, a deserved thing. It just, like, I happen to be aware that I'm, like, manifesting so that, like, that just allows what the angels want to do to everyone to, like, pour in through me. It's not, like, I'm special, um, even though I am special, we're all special, but <laughs> yeah. it's not, like... I'm like extraordinary because <laughs> like you know I can pick up on like the omens in the, of, like the language of the world as few people like to put it but yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I've been channeling quite a lot of angels lately. Really? So. It's a hair That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Archangel Gabriel was with me in Hawaii. Yeah. The whole time I was in Hawaii. I actually told my mom about it. And she was talking about the fact that she knows some of her uh, guardian angels. And it was so surprising to hear, like, my mom accept that type of truth and, like, even herself have that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Surprising, you know, when it's coming from your mom and you've never really talked about it to her before. Yeah. Did you grow up religious at all? Grew up going to Christian church. Right, okay. So, I mean, it was a Christian raising up certain things. I actually, it was funny because I was in church one day and I remember thinking this when I was a kid. I was like, kind of, I don't know. I saw that the church said you only live once Mm -hmm. and that, you know, when you die, you just go to heaven Mm -hmm. and that's, that's it. But then I remember watching this documentary about the Indians talking about reincarnation and a few days before that show came out, I was like, this, I don't know if I can say I'm a Christian now because I feel like for some reason I feel like incarnation is true. And I remember thinking, you know, I don't know why I think that, but I do. You had that, like, full soul resonation even as a kid. Like, yeah. Weird. And I had a lot of that stuff that I'm, like, just now remembering that I had. <clears throat> All those yeah. abilities. And... Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. good to hear about your experience so do you want to hear that channel yeah absolutely this is the source this is the creator i am here to bring awareness i'm here to bring understanding truth knowledge and light i am the bright center of the universe in which you all exist. We will be with you every moment that you are in. We will always be with you forever, eternally. When you have thoughts about this illusion, this world of illusion, you begin to experience it. You need to clear your mind of it. Illusion no longer exists. You have abundance within you. It exists within you. It is you. As you are me, do you see? Let it be. You do not need to do anything, just let it be, and you will see everything you need to. Watch and enjoy the show. That is it for now, so go. Do what you have said you would do. I will take care of the rest. Go and be with those of the higher frequency. Watch and see how it will come to be. Now go. Let it be done. And be gracious and have gratitude for everything I have given you. I am here with you. You have manifested everything. And you will now begin to live in the moment 
that you have wished to experience. This is not you speaking. This is me, the creator, the source, the alpha, the omega, the omnipresent, omniconscious being that resides in the bright center of the universe. I am calling you to do what you chose to do long ago. I want to expand and even do live shows. You know who Lilo Macy is? Lilo Macy? Essentially, she goes all over the world now to interview everyone who's psychiatrist, and she does it all by donations. Yeah. She like decided to quit her job just one day. She wrote this book about like not fitting in the world and like the interviews she does are just like first of all awesome people, but her life is so awesome now. And more and more, I realize it. Like. All these Mayan elders, literally anyone you can think of that's done anything with like science and spirituality or just spirituality or like people healing. Um, every few days she's inter interviewing like the coolest people in the world. Like just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of interviews. And every single one of them is like awesome. And she just. She doesn't, she, she'll put out a few videos herself, but I'm just like, this lady is the coolest job ever. She just kind of sits and listens to all the people she ever wanted to meet, you know? Yeah, that's definitely something big to manifest. I think donations definitely the way to go. Yeah, totally. And it's obviously worked for her if she's going all over. She's like in Hawaii one day and then like in Mexico and like France the next day. Like, the reality is she should be very fast. Here you are. There you are. Oh, I saw her do a channeling with another woman Where? a few days ago. Uh, I found this movie too. I haven't really gone, but an hour 23. Apparently it was taken down for a while and just got put back up. Definitely stuff that I should be watching. Yeah. Uh, you want to listen to that? Hmm? This? The channel? Yeah. yeah. It was recorded in a conversation. Nice. Just case. Right. <laughs> Is that cool? Oh, yeah. Okay.